Ask us ask credit by Redmond Dites. What was the biggest culture shock you experienced while traveling abroad? Public restrooms in Japan. Heated seats, bidets, and buttons I'm still scared to press. India. All of India. Everything about India. Not being judgmental, just saying it is so profoundly different than where I'm from. I was in Saudi Arabia with work one time, and there was a public execution taking place in a car park behind the hotel. Mental. Long year boon in Spitsburg. It is forbidden to leave the city without a rifle and an authorization because of polar bears. Panel beware of polar bear everywhere. No guns inside the market and a pile of shotguns lying around next to the entrance. The school is a real prison, with iron grids and barbed wire to protect the children from the bears. It's forbidden to lock your car or house, so that anyone can take refuge in case of polar bear attack. Did I talk about polar bears? It's Savo National Park guest lodge pool sign. No swimming after sunset. Silly me asked why. The cats drink there. At 9pm we looked from the safety of the lodge. The cats were lions and leopards. Honestly, just how late dinner is served in some places. Like I was starving at 6pm, thinking I missed something huge. Food is life you know. North Africa. Men sitting outside, drinking tea, chatting, doing nothing. Women doing housework, getting food, picking up kids from school, lifting all the weight. It's like that most of the Middle East. Paying for the bathroom. When I was a young teen my family and two other families were, who were friends with went on vacation to the United States, to Florida. We are from Germany. My English was as good as can be expected from a 12-13 year old, but surprisingly I was still the most competent in our travel group. Probably because the adults hadn't had any lessons for decades. I was not prepared for the amount of smell talk. Random people chatting with you. The cashier at the supermarket. Employees in stores greeting you, asking if they can be of any help. I was already shy, not confident in my language skills, and used to a culture where people generally leave you to your business. And where it's normal for teens to explore on their own. At that age I was allowed to take any public transport I had a valid ticket for and just go out and spend my time where I wanted to. At least as long as I told my parents where I intended to go. Although that wasn't always easy to predict. Once or twice I ended up in some unfamiliar place in the evening, stuck there because I missed the last bus and then had to call my parents from a payphone to come and pick me up. Let's just say there weren't many opportunities to explore Florida on my own. I kinda felt like much younger kid again, always glued to my parents. Plus the sheer amount of choice in the supermarkets. How do you guys even get your shopping done in a reasonable amount of time? The time it took us just to check out all the different types of ice cream flavors is probably equal to how long our average weekend shopping trip took back home. If I lived in the United States, I'd be shuffling through aisles upon aisles of cereal, starving, because I can't make up my mind what to buy. People take putting trash in the right bins pretty seriously in Germany. I once saw my landlord picking through my trash and sorting it shortly after moving in and I got a stern lecture afterward. Saw him checking a few other times, but I did my best to do it right after that. Similarly in Switzerland, people seem to watch the trash bins like hawks for anyone using the non-taxed bags. I always use the right ones, but I saw someone else use a normal black trash bag at like 10pm, and someone started shouting at him from one of the apartments above. Also was pretty surprised how different or more laid back restaurants are especially in Switzerland. In the United States, once you're done eating, or even before you are, they're giving you the check, so they can turn more tables a sap. First time I went out to eat, I sat there with my friend for like 45 minutes, before we caught on that maybe we have to ask for the bill. In Japan, the politeness was a huge culture shock. 
bowing instead of shaking hands, and handling money with both hands, flipped my etiquette expectations upside down. In Germany cars on autobahn, don't stay in the left lane. They pass and then get right, and it's wonderful. I stayed in a small village in Romania. They have unsegregated bathrooms without stall doors, and the toilets were basically holes in the ground you had to squat over. The streets were cobblestone, and their main transportation was horse-drawn wagons. It was like stepping into the 1800s, and it was 2006. China is an obvious one to pick out, but damn some of the culture shocks were intense as a British person. Particularly noticeable in the poorer areas. The big cities, as in all countries, are pristine and presentable. Someone just letting their child crap in the subway at the side next to a bin. And many pissing on the street in the middle of the day. Spitting. Like big, hawking gobs on the street everywhere. A woman's gobbed on the bus next to me. I really hated this. People with disfigurements begging. There was a man with a literal white bone stuck out of his stump begging at the side of a busy area. China doesn't give a crap about poor people's health. A dwarf entertaining on the street and people pointing and laughing in a mocking way. It was like a freak show, and I was very uncomfortable. Being stared at, and taken photos of you, to being blonde and white. People from the countryside, who were visiting the city for the first time in their lives, were amazed seeing different cultures. One boy literally stopped me, and asked in broken English for a photo with me. He said he was practicing his English, his parents looked on from a distance with their thumbs up, and it was really adorable. Others would just stop and stare at me in the middle of the street which was pretty embarrassing. Poor farmer women in the fields. Like literally folded in half with a huge bend in their back from bending over their entire lives. The angle was astonishing. I could go on. I loved China, it's now a lot harder to travel there, so I'm glad I did, when I got the chance. There's also a lot of amazing areas and loads of lovely people. Like anywhere, there's crappy parts and better parts. I hated how they treat poor people. The tourist parts are carefully cleaned, and often have guards watching you behave, which was weird. The countryside was beautiful in parts. A lot of tourist areas were so utterly rammed with people, I didn't enjoy them much. That despite how friendly the Irish are, they are actually impossible to make friends with. Ireland has a very closed, family-centric culture. They make their friends at school and stick with them for life, very rarely letting new people into their circles. You'll never be short of a friendly someone to talk to sitting at the bus stop, but forget about living here as an outsider, and making meaningful friendships. About a decade and a half ago, I went to visit my then boyfriend in Japan, where he was teaching English as part of the JET program. He met me at Narita airport and we took a train to Tokyo. I had a moment of alarm, when I saw that a lot of people were wearing masks thinking there was an endemic illness spreading in Japan. My boyfriend hadn't told me that masking up to go out in public was the norm if you were concerned about getting sick or if you were feeling poorly and didn't want to get others sick. Driving in Dhaka and driving in Napoli. Never been so stressed for different reasons. That French people are very very mean. If you don't speak fluent French, they will ignore you, you can't speak in English, you can't speak in Spanish, you can't even use a translator to tell them what you want to say. If you don't speak French by yourself, you're not welcome there. That, or they just have something against Latinus, don't know. How shockingly inefficient the work practices of the Japanese are. All my life I grew up being informed how efficient they were, but it's shocking to see how something simple, like changing currency, becomes like something out of Monty Python sketch. And don't get me wrong, they are very nice to tourists. In Italy, they don't just give you water with meals, you have to ask, and even then a lot of the times they charge you for it. In fact, sometimes if you ask for a glass of tap water, the waiteress will straight up just tell you no, lol. 
I actually learned, while I was there, some places may actually find it rude to ask for tap water. While by default they serve mineral or sparkling water. However, it is still not free in most instances. Taking a domestic flight in New Zealand. I notice I go to the gate to board my plane, and we didn't go though any security. It was shocking to me, that New Zealand has some domestic flights with no security screening. When we found the gate for a domestic flight from Auckland airport, we were really concerned, that we were at what appeared to be a bus stop. No security, tiny plane, it was mad. Nice and quick though. China. Dire parade children wearing assless chaps. Defecating in public. I'm talking in the cities. Forbidden city, hotel hallways, streets. How differently personal space is defined. In America, it's easily the span of your arms. In Germany, it's the distance of your breath. In England, it's how far you can dissociate. Elderly people working in USA. I was in New York, and was served by a waitress, that looked in her 80s. You don't see that in Spain. Also a blind man begging in the subway. Here blind people have a powerful organization, and, at a minimum, they can work selling the lottery that funds it. I had never seen a blind, or disabled person begging before. Japan. Getting on the bus in the back. Paying the fare as you get off. Leaving your suitcases at the busiest train station to get something in the convenience store, and nobody touches it, including security. People reading adult comics on the train or bus or metro without a fuss. When the line at the convenience store reaches to three people, another employee comes to open a new cash. There's a lot more. People politely lining up for the bus in London. I live work in New York, and the scrum to board the bus is something to behold. Florida, the level of obesity. Not just plus 40 pounds, more like plus 400 pounds. China. Toddlers peeing freely on the street, and it evaporating super quick, because of the heat, it was super weird. Also China, bluntly taking pics of people without asking, even posing with them, just because they look unique to them. Iceland. So many beautiful tall people. That's all folks. Thank you for watching. If you like videos like this one, why not like and subscribe for more. Have a nice evening. Tell your friends about me.